All right, hey guys, and welcome to another video. So today I wanted to talk about a topic that may just make some of you excited to learn that you might just have an uncommon or expensive 3DS game in your collection. And I say expensive with air quotes because, well, think of it this way. Most games that come out for the 3DS, brand new, cost between $30 and $40 retail, right? So over time, it's a general rule of thumb that basically 95% of games depreciate in value over time, for the most part. However, some games go out of print and still have a high demand, or they maybe just got a small print run and people want to get a hold of it. And used games that years later actually keep their value or actually go up in price is actually pretty uncommon. So if you have a game that's, say, released for $30 brand new, but today it's selling for $35 to $40 used, that means that it's pretty uncommon, and by 3DS standards, it's actually a little bit expensive. There's only a few exceptions, maybe two or three collector's editions that exceed the $100 mark on the 3DS, such as Kingdom Hearts, which I don't own. Um, but other than that, most 3DS games, even if they're incredibly rare, don't exceed the $100 yet, thankfully, for those of you out there that are interested in playing some of these. So what do you say we get to showing some of my 3DS games that I, through research, I went on eBay and looked around, um, found were actually pretty uncommon, out of print, and kind of holding their price or even increasing. So this video wouldn't be complete without mentioning one of the most sought after 3DS games out there right now, and that's Cave Story 3D. Now, don't let this fool you. Don't jump on any copy of Cave Story that you see out in the wild or in a game store. The only reason why this sells for about $65 to $70 in complete condition is because of this. That's right, this lenticular slipcover increases the price of Cave Story by almost twofold. Um, because you can pick up a normal copy of Cave Story just like this for a decent $25, $35, you know, on average about $30, $35-ish. But add in the slip cover, which I bought this instantly because I have a big weakness to lenticular cover games. Um, it increases it almost upwards of $70 in good condition. Uh, it's out of print. And a lot of people actually don't even prefer this port of Cave Story. This is the first version of Cave Story I ever played, and I enjoyed it. I mean, people don't like the fact that it's got 3D backgrounds with the 2D sprites, but I personally love that graphical style. So yeah, this this is by far the most expensive 3DS non-collector's edition game out there. So if you ever see this with the lenticular cover for a decent price, make sure that you jump on that. All right, and next are three games that a lot of you probably have in your collection. I wouldn't doubt it if most of you have all three of them. And they're actually going up in price quite dramatically because they're out of print. Now, all three of these games could go back into print at some point because Nintendo can decide, hey, these have been out of print, there's a lot of demand for it, let's reprint it, and then the value goes back to normal. But as of right now, as of making this video, the Legend of Zelda The Ocarina of Time has been out of print for quite some time, and this goes for, I got my prices over here, about $50 to $60 in complete condition right now. Apparently it actually used to be worse, like people were paying maybe like $70 to $80 at some point for this. So it's starting to go down, starting to stabilize a little bit, but I'm assuming most of you have this game, and you now own one of the more uncommon and expensive 3DS games in your collection. Also, Star Fox 64 3D out of print, becoming uncommon, not quite as expensive, it's about $35 to $45 for a complete copy. But I'm assuming a lot of you have this as well. That's just what happens when a game goes out of print. You know, it's, sure it's not expensive by what I was mentioning earlier, but this game's been out for a few years now, and the fact that it still commands retail or above for a used copy, to me, that makes this a pretty uncommon, if even rare game. And lastly is Kid Icarus Uprising. Now, this one is only hard and expensive uh, to get a hold of if you go for the box version with the stand for the 3DS. So the, the standalone copy of the game in the box, you can get that for about an average price, $20, $30. But if you're going for the complete box copy with the 3DS stand inside, which I highly recommend for this game, uh, you're looking at about $50 to $60. Whether or not it comes with the cards might increase the price a little or decrease it. But yeah, this is another ad print game that a lot of you probably own that you might want to hold on to for the future if they don't decide to reprint it because, well, I'm going to assume they're probably not going to do another reprinting with the stand. All right, and next is an example of a game that um, it's not quite a collector's edition, but it just shows you that keeping, you know, your boxes and the little promotional items that come with stuff, uh, especially when buying a game used, really makes a difference. And that's Code of Princess. 
So by itself, if you get this game without the cardboard box and the soundtrack and the um, art book that's inside of here, you're looking at about $20, $25, $30. But once you add in the box, the art book, and the CD inside, it's about a $40 to $50 game. So it actually almost doubles the price just by keeping these little extras that come with the game. So this game, I believe, is not... The game itself is not hard to find by any means. But finding this limited edition can be. So I actually wanted to derail a little bit and go off before I get to the last two games um, and talk about, you know, how do you know when a 3DS game is going to become rare and kind of uncommon or expensive in some means? And just an example of some games that I actually thought were going to be rare but totally weren't. Um, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Soul Hackers. I saw this game coming out in the boxed edition, you know, from Atlas with the soundtrack, the art book, all that jazz. And this game got way overprinted. I don't know what happened, but this game is not hard to get by any means. It's not that expensive. I mean, I was expecting this to become one of the hardest to find 3DS games because it's just so obscure, right? It's a port of an old Japanese import only Saturn game, RPG, dungeon. Like, it just had all the makings to become a rare game. Never did. But, you know, if you overprint your game, and I, I guess that's what happened with Atlas, they, they maybe overprinted it, um, or maybe even the digital release on the eShop kind of like didn't, uh, who knows? Who knows why it didn't become rare? I mean, another example are some of the Etrian Odyssey games, like Etrian Odyssey 4, or Etrian Odyssey Untold. There's a couple more, uh, and there's more coming out, like there's the new Mystery Dungeon one that just came out, which I have as well. But just an example, you know, games like this, typically, as history has shown with many systems, Obscure RPGs like this tend to become kind of hard to get. Um, they go up in price, but the Etrian Odyssey games, I guess, are becoming popular enough as a series for them to print tons of copies, and as a result, the market gets a little overflooded, and the price doesn't really go up. Uh, and then another example, I have the collector's box up on a shelf because, well, I just didn't feel like getting it, but this is Shen Megami Tensei 4. They had a really kind of cool-looking collector's edition that Nintendo was heavily promoting. Like, there was actually a lot of promotion behind this game, and that's the reason why I guess the Collector's Edition never became that rare, because there were so many printed, because Nintendo had a huge backing for this game. So just another example of a few games that, well, the stars align right, and they don't become rare. Um, which can be a good thing, because, you know, a lot of these games people want to play, and they don't want to have to pay double the price to play them, so... And lastly, the last two games here are sort of more obscure 3DS titles that not a lot of people know about, not a lot of people probably own, uh, but the demand is out there, they're out of print, they're harder to get a hold of. Some of the older releases on the 3DS. And the first one is Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure. Um, this came out a few years ago, it's one of the more early 3DS releases, and this is great for fans of like Professor Layton or any kind of like rhythm games, like mini games. It, it's because Professor Layton in a way that it has like that visual novel style um, between the mini games and puzzle solving and all different stuff that's in here. It's, it's like a combination of all different kinds of stuff that I'd highly recommend to people. Um, it, it's about, what, what did I write down on this one? Uh, 40 to $50 for a complete copy of this. So, if you're on the lookout for future rare and expensive games on 3DS, Rhythm Thief is one to look out for. And I'd argue that it's kind of worth that price. And lastly is um, an early game. I'm just checking the price, yep. So this one's about $35 to $40 complete. It came out only two months after release of the 3DS in North America. And that's Blaze Blue Continuum Shift 2. So this is basically portable Blaze Blue on the 3DS. Turning on the 3D makes the frame rate pretty bad from what I remember. And the controls, well, you can only use the D-pad. That was a killer for me. I hated this game because of that. But I guess Blaze Blue fans are kind of clamoring to get their hands on this um, because I'm assuming it's pretty hard to get a hold of considering that a game that is almost four years old, almost a launch game, is going for about $40 used. So that's the last uh, game that I personally own. There's one more game um, that is not a collector's edition that goes for about, uh, let's see, $35 to $40. And that's a game called Cubic Ninja. And this game is basically, from what I understand, a puzzle navigation game where you're sort of like navigating this little cubic ninja through this play area trying to avoid fans and getting hit by enemies apparently it's a pretty cool fun little hidden gem of a game i don't own it yet maybe i'll pick it up but that's the last one that i wanted to let you guys know about so there you go as of 2015 about four years after the release of the 3ds that's about the standings of where we have for uncommon rare expensive games for the system. So hopefully that'll give you guys an idea of what to look out for when you're out game hunting for the 3DS. 
and I'm curious to see what the prices are going to look like a few more years from now. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And one thing I wanted to mention, uh, I'm going to be streaming a lot more on Twitch now. So if you're not following me on Twitch and you want to see me play games live, hang out, chat with me in real time. Uh, just the other night, I was doing a live eBay game hunting video with my Twitch viewers, and we had a lot of fun with that. I bought some stuff. I bought some stuff for subscribers. So head on over to my ch Twitch channel. I'll put a link right down here below. You can also check the channel uh, description or the video description. And I hope to see you guys over there in my next stream. See you guys later.